Okay, so the new source environment is entirely online. So what we have is data servers running in a UK data center that get backed up every night uh, so that your uh, student's code is safe. Um, <clears throat> the home page is a showcase of students' work. So when people come in, they have the opportunity to see apps that people have written, and students can give them a little thumbnail if they want um, in order to um, you know, get some excitement and encourage people to play, and then you can leave comments and reviews and so on. So it is an environment where uh, collaboration is encouraged, learning from others is encouraged, um, and you can very easily run someone's code, click a button to create a derivative, and then build from it. Um, <clears throat> and there's been quite a lot of students creating things like text-based quizzes around things that they love, like Harry Potter and so on, or football and, and so on, things like that. So we'll, we'll come back to the, to the site in a minute. Um, just to give you an introduction about, uh, about eSource and how it's being used, uh, if I go into my workspace, I've got uh, uh, the, app, the app that was just running on the Pi. So all the apps run in the browser. Um, it uses Java as a runtime environment for now, because uh, that suits us. But in fact, I've already ported it to C for the, um, for the Raspberry Pi. So we could put it onto other devices. And that also allows it to be easily ported to Android, which we've already done. Um, <coughs> I wanted to tell you a little bit about some of the ways that people are using it. So Bay House School, I don't know if anyone's here from Bay House School, but um, are you here from Bay House? Oh, thanks very much. <laughs> uh, Luke, one of your colleagues, uh, yeah. kindly wrote some words. <clears throat> 350 people in year nine, is that right? So this is one of the largest schools in the country. Must be in the top dozen schools in the country. And so you've been experimenting with introducing programming at year nine. And, and the, way that, um, the way that they did it was to <clears throat> actually not go um, the way that I know a lot of other schools are doing it, which is, you know, let's get some images on the screen and get the children programming around, that sort of thing. But you kind of set up a, a challenge around the Caesar cipher. Um, and so by setting programming challenges around, effectively, you know, if uh, the Caesar cipher works by mapping the letters of the alphabet with an offset, you know, and so it's one of those oldest uh, ciphers possible. Um, and so you've been, you chose USource, in the words of your colleague Luke, you chose USource for a number of reasons. It allows pupils to access their work from home as well as school. Uh, you didn't need to provide a risk assessment around running executable files at school computers. Uh, there's a teacher admin section that I would like to show you because a lot of teachers ask me about that, that allows you to set up student accounts very easily and keep an eye on what the students are doing. Um, the support, that's very kindly saying, has been exceptional um, and I enjoy working with teachers um, to give them the support they need to get the most out of the resource. Um, and, uh, and one of the teacher admin facilities allows you to import, you know, in this case, hundreds of students and create those accounts rather than one by one, which no doubt did save Luke an awful lot of time. From the pupils' perspective, they like seeing the library functions run, turn green if they're typing, so that's within the editor. So there's quite a lot of feedback within the editor that encourages um, you know, fewer mistakes. Um, and actually, one of, the, one of the areas we put the most um, investment is around the checker or the compiler, because it is a compiler for children. And so you do not see syntax error on line 12, but you do see more help around perhaps you were trying to do this, or did you mean that? Um, and, and actually, the reason for that is because um, yeah, my, I, want all, I want exactly what you're doing. I want all children around year nine to have the opportunity to do some programming. Um, and that's going to place huge demands on teachers. Um, and you can't have classes where 30 hands go up at once. And you, you do need a much more teacher-orientated um, learning resource uh, than perhaps some of the professional tools that are out there. That, that was my view anyway. Um, and so they're getting better at correcting their own, co uh, own code. The majority of pupils like the CIFA cipher challenge. The bit I didn't put in there is, I think, especially perhaps in, in some mixed uh, ability schools, it probably won't float everyone's boat uh, you know, for the students, and some people won't find it um, something like that exciting. Um, but I have heard that some of the people who are finding it exciting are going to be moving on to do GCSE computing, and, and you know, igniting those sparks is, is a key part of what we're trying to do, isn't it?
So another teacher, uh, and I won't say too much about this because she's very kindly um, following a teach share that I did, um, which Leon was on, then wrote a, a full page that's in the CAS newsletter in the current edition, page 11. Um, but um, I've actually visited this school at her request um, and seen what, they're, seen what they're doing. And um, yes, it's a, it's a grammar school, um, but she's teaching 25 classes of 25 girls uh, GCSE computing starting when uh, that was in pilot stage and that they've now just gone through and they've just loved it. They've done brilliantly. I think um, she remarks that I think it was perhaps her enthusiasm for the subject that motivated so many girls to get on it in the first place. Um, but then they've really enjoyed the course. I mean, they've been using USORS probably longer than anybody else. They've used it for all their um, controlled assessments. And there's certain facilities that are built into USORS that specifically support controlled assessments, especially locking and unlocking controlled, you know, those controlled assessments to control when the students can access it. Um, but um, you know, even going through it, uh, at, you know, at the end of, sort of 18 months or so of using the, sort, the, the, res the resource and getting to the, the girls taking their final exams and all the controlled assessments are in, she remains a, a very strong supporter of, uh, of what we're doing. Uh, just to pick up the pace, um, because what I wanted to do was show you some of the apps that are on the site, some that we've written, some that students have written, and show you the teacher admin resource. Um, I just wanted to use this as a final placeholder, and I'm just going to drop some blocks on here just to stimulate a couple of comments from me. And I just want to talk about USource as it is today. Um, USource, where we think we want to go with it, some of which um, we can, we've got in prototype already. And USource Plus, um, which is not a sales pitch, it is an opportunity for schools to support what we're doing and to get more value in return. Um, <clears throat> so USource is all online. Uh, all you need is a web browser and Java installed. And at some point in the future, we'll probably lose Java, perhaps when we move to HTML5 and JavaScript, when that sort of technology is more common in schools. But, but actually, a, a survey that we did of schools shows that uh, most of them already had Java installed anyway for things like Scratch. Um, being online brings um, an extra burden of responsibility, especially around child safety. Um, and so I just wanted to cover a couple of the points that we take about this. Um, unlike a lot of the um, games and social networking things that my 13-year-old daughter uses, um, USource does not allow people-to-people -people communication online. Um, it's, uh, you know, any contributions that anybody makes, whether it's in an app, an image, uh, a question in a forum, uh, or a comment that's made by someone on someone else's app goes through moderation. Um, and uh, thank goodness we've done that, uh, just because, not because anything sinister has happened, but actually because children are quite cruel. And we want it to be a positive environment. And some of the, this is, you know, swear word, comments left by some people on other people's apps, quite frankly, would have been demotivating. So, yeah, we make it quite clear. Not only are we filtering uh, to make sure that um, there's nothing to be concerned about in terms of people trying to contact the children, but we also want it to be a positive environment. How long does that take to see something appear that's been moderated? Um, it's, you, it's of the order of an hour to several hours. Because um, effectively what happens is all the comments, images, all of that sort of stuff comes through on my phone. Um, and, uh, Do you moderate them all? Yes. I do. No, that, not, not all of them, actually. So now, um, at teacher suggestions, um, for example, if an app is going to be published, teachers said, we want to moderate it first. So if we create a student account, we want it coming to us first, because it could be homework, or it could be a controlled assessment, um, and we don't want that responsibility out with you. Um, so most things just come through the approved deny link uh, on a mobile phone. Uh, oh, another point on that, so on, on child safety. Um, all questions from students come to us through the forum so that they're public. Um, and if uh, we, we love having students, uh, sorry, we love having teachers follow us on news source. It gives us an opportunity to talk about what's happening. We don't follow back um, students. So there's no opportunity for direct messaging on Twitter either. Um, it's easy to learn. Uh, we're told it, we, we wanted it to be easy to learn, but we're told it's easy to learn as well as a, as a programming language. It's got its roots in many of the languages I've used, like C and Java, and it's designed as a stepping stone to Java, or languages like that, or C, and you'll see that in some of the syntax. 
Um, but there's other there's other things which uh, which uh, uh, went into the design actually, which couple back to Quin Quintin's uh, um, presentation in here before this one, which was around encouraging children to read code um, as much as they want to dive in and write code. Um, so one of the biggest constraints in the language is that you can only do one thing on one line. So in, in, in languages like C or Java that I, I use and love, you, know, you can have if, open three brackets, call a function, do some kind of checks and, and so on. And that works. But if you then imagine someone who's new to coding, perhaps at the year 9, 10, sitting down trying to read and learn from other people, that's, that's really quite hard. Um, because they have to get into the brain of the person who was, who was writing it. And, and then you're into level, different levels of maturity, um, complicating your ability to learn from other people. So the, the, the biggest way we've got around that is there's one thing per line. So if, you know, in that example I gave, if open three brackets, call a function, you call a function first, and you do store the variable, the return var variable somewhere, and then you do the if. And it just makes it a lot more stepwise in terms of how apps are written. And we want people to learn from other people. Um, it's got a friendly compiler. I've already mentioned that. Uh, use broad or deep. So it, we love it when a school says we want to put a whole year group through it because that's so aligned with the vision and where it came from. Um, and, and that brings responsibility to us around uh, having some lesson plans, the six free lesson plans that allow you to get into it very easily, you know, get the Hello World on the screen, load an image because we think it motivates students to see a football logo, and, uh, and then learn about looping by moving the image. So you know, we, we, we um, encourage that sort of approach, um, and we want it to be simple, any ability, over a few weeks, make some progress. Um, the deep means that we have to have a level of sophistication in the tool that supports GCSE computing, especially for OCR. Um, it's the most mature. Um, we get the strongest feedback from teachers about the board, and I'm sure the others are, are going to do very well as well. But OCR is the one that we're most familiar with. Um, some examples of deep are um, we need to be able to support file manipulation. You know, there was a, there was a recipe scaling. You know, uh, so you've got a recipe for four people. Um, how, how do you scale it to feed nine? I mean, that was one of the OCR controlled assessments this year. Um, and so we need to provide things like file support. And we do that in, in a way that complements the rest of the language and the library functions very, very well. You know, you do a file open. You can do file read. You can do file write. You can check for end of file, and you can close a file. But all of those functions are acting on files on our servers. So again, there's nothing on the local computers. Um, when the teacher then goes in and looks at the code, they can, they can view the, the students' files as well that they're running on. Um, and I'll show you that in a moment. Um, teacher portal will come to. That gives, well, you know, anyone can register for here, but when teachers contact us and say, I'm a teacher, I'm at this school, um, then after we do a check to make sure that's true, then we <coughs> uh, grant teacher privileges. Teacher privileges allow you to create as many accounts as you like so that students, in fact, we don't want students to, to register with the site. It's, it's much better if the teacher um, registers as a teacher and, and sets up the student accounts because it gives them visibility over everything that their students are doing. Um, so I've mentioned computing. Uh, the other, the reason to have specifically have this block here is because um, as part of supporting teachers, if teachers say, um, <clears throat> as in fact, I mean Luke did, um, so Luke said, we're going to do the Caesar cipher, here's a couple of apps that we've written in new source that do it, take a look at it, you know, um, is that the right sort of thing? And I said, yeah, that's exactly right, that's really good, and yeah, here's another one that I've write just to show you how it's done. So there is that level of um, personal support for teachers around, you know, what's the best way to approach this? Um, optimized engaging um, is, is that we're continually improving the performance of the runtime, so it works better on lower spec PCs, but I've already seen it working in schools very, very well, and I don't have any performance reports back from, um, from uh, teachers. The, the other reason we're trying to optimize it is because we want it to run on things like the Raspberry Pi, um, which today aren't as powerful, you know, and probably won't, they'll never be as powerful as a top-end PC, but um, it, in, in the porting that we've done over the last week, we can see that the Pi um, is nowhere near as powerful as a PC for doing general processing. Um, but we also, we also want students to be excited about using USource, and I think you can only be excited about doing Hello World and getting an image moving if you know that the system is capable of doing actually quite a compelling game. If all it can ever do is bounce an image around the screen, um, why would I invest in that? 
Um, and so I will show you a couple of games that push the boundaries a little bit, and I hope you agree they're, you know, that they're engaging. Um, in terms of USource Plus benefits, um, so USource itself is free. Um, everything that we've developed um, has, has been free. We, we have reached a threshold where, you know, if we're investing a lot of time producing some, you know, pretty high resolution videos, for example, um, then we're buying additional server capacity and storage capacity. Yeah, I would like to see uh, schools um, contribute towards that. But this will we'll never drop the barrier, and we've never taken anything that we've developed and, not, and we've offered it for free and then said, you know what, that's not free anymore, and, and we won't. So there is, a, there is an ad-free version. So if, if, if schools pay uh, uh, £75 um, a year, which currently is discounted to 50 if it's ordered before the end of July, um, then they can create as many student accounts as they like. So it's a fraction of what you might pay for certain other development environments, but it shows a bit more of a commitment between each other, between us and the school, um, and we try to offer quite a lot more in return. So no ads for students, um, a private help forum, so that only your students and you and us, uh, well, me in particular, there to support you, um, <clears throat> have access to that forum. And you know, it, to be honest, if you don't want uh, my help. If you just want it for a way to set homework and give feedback, that's fine. Excuse yeah. Me, I just send you a moment there. Um, hmm. It's free, but if you don't want the ads, you then That's right. That, that's absolutely right. Okay. So uh, where do we get our money? So well, I run an IT consultancy. It's small but profitable. And to be honest, because I've written the whole thing, um, it's not as if it's cost a, 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 and outside of booking hours that I book to my customers, it's not like it's cost us a lot of money. Um, we have sponsorship advertising and also a, an offline licensing model for someone who may not have access to the internet, for example. It gives you development expertise as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah, exactly. Um, <coughs> so we give a bigger workspace. So everyone has a megabyte. That might not sound very much. Actually, if you look at that school that's uh, just done 18 months of GCSE, including some girls there who program for fun using it, they're only really nudging the, the basic limit. So, you know, it's not like, it's not like you have to do this because you need that. It's not like uh, we've set it up in that way at all. But if you want to give people a bigger workspace, you, then they can. Um, and then we provide some videos and posters and things like that as well to, so that you're not always dragging all this help videos down your internet connection, but you've, you've got it locally already. And then looking to the future, um, Raspberry Pi um, <coughs> is an important step for us. Um, for two reasons, I think. I mean, we're very happy with the PC platform. Um, it gives us almost everything that we want. Um, it works on PCs, it works on Macs. Um, the bit it doesn't give is the ability to get out and allow students to start experimenting with electronics. Um, and the Raspberry Pi does give us that. And I will, at the end, I will save two minutes, even though I wasn't, the people who came in late, what I was doing, the, one of the reasons I coded my presentation actually as an app in Usource is because I've spent the last week porting the runtime or the, the beginnings of the runtime to the Raspberry Pi. And I was hoping to surprise and delight you all by exactly, it looks exactly like this, I promise, um, on the Raspberry Pi I've got there. But it needs 3G network connection to get out onto the internet. And uh, we're, we're in the basement. So that's not working. Um, so what, so um, already, what I will show you is we've we ported um, the basic runtime, had to convert it to C, had to optimize it a lot to get it running reasonably. Um, but we've already added an, uh, a library function around setting the GPIO pins. And the Raspberry Pi has these interfaces which allow you to literally control, you know, 5 volt, 0 volt on a couple of pins, and that can drive some LEDs. And so, you know, that, that feature of the Raspberry Pi that it allows us to get into electronics is, is so important that even before getting the rest of the runtime running, I wanted to be able to show you that. The other, the other reason, of course, is because of the, the hype around it and the buzz, uh, which I think is, is going to be good for getting people, especially parents, I think, actually, uh, sort of re-engaged around computing. Uh, Rachel's Rabbit is something that we've done um, at the request of some of the teachers who enjoyed the teacher admin portal. They like the web only side of things. They don't need to install um, anything on the computers. But um, they want something for younger coders. Um, and they want something a bit more engaging than some of the environments that they were using already. 
Uh, so I'll show it to you very quickly because it's, it's already an uh, alpha version being used in some schools, but it's effectively an engaging little rabbit who hops around a field. And you control the rabbit using logo type commands. So you can go forward, back, turn for some of the control side of primary. Um, but you can also ask for a random carrot. So there's a new logo command called CR that drops a carrot in the field. And then you've got to now engage your brain about how do I orientate myself and so on. Early days, but runnable and being used already. Um, <clears throat> robot toys, uh, we would like to get into this. Um, maybe we'll do this through uh, the Raspberry Pi. Um, but our, our vision is no wires, so some sort of engaging uh, toy for boys and girls, probably two, which probably looks at the computer screen in order to optically receive the program in order to eliminate the need for wires and so on. And we've got a couple of prototypes running, but nothing I can show yet. Um, and then we will also get it on the BlackBerry because for whatever you read in the press, um, uh, a lot of students have BlackBerry. Um, we, Usource already runs on Android, but uh, a lot of kids have Blackberries actually. Um, and the, the buzz and excitement they get doing the homework and showing in class is only available to sort of half of, well, about a third of the uh, students at the moment. BlackBerry will give us the other, another third. Unfortunately, I don't think we'll ever be able to run on iPhone because of Apple's um, approach to apps that create apps, and uh, they don't allow those. Um, that, well, that is, uh, that's a, a gallop through, I'll try to say what we do now, what we're going to do in the future, and some of the benefits of Usource Plus. Does anyone have any questions at that point before I show the teacher portal? Who, who, is, who is we in this case? Who is we? Is, is it in fact you? We is... We is 99% me. Um, I do have people, so I have a teacher who helps. You may have met her at places like BET. Um, and my vision is that I can grow it, but uh, I'm philanthropic enough to put it together in the first place, and it started for my eldest daughter um, as a way to get her into programming. Um, but I'm also a businessman, so I have to balance it against um, other things I want to do in my business. So in an ideal world, I would, I would sell enough of the offline licenses to the people I want to sell that to that, uh, that I can commit more resources onto it. You seem to have done such an amazing amount. It's kind of uh, well, remarkable. But I, but I kind of wonder if, you, if you're successful in attracting lots and lots of kids to use it, then soon you know, you're just, just moderating. You'll spend all your day clicking. Yeah, so on, uh, on your but I, but I've, I've got so many teachers I could call on who may want to help moderate because right. they believe yeah. in it. Yeah. So. Just an yeah, it, well, it's an example, but the reason I hold it close at the moment is just paranoia. You know, when, you, when you're small like this, you, yeah. the last thing I could do is, I mean, I, is, I think I even went to one of Luke, I, I even went to Luke and said, look, someone's published this picture. Is it okay or is it, is it um, bullying? You know, I'm just, I par I'm paranoid at that level that I don't even want to delegate yeah. any of that. Um, and to be honest, um, it's, it's all doable within, within what goes on within my business and my time. So for now, it's, um, it's okay. And it can scale. You know, you, we can have other moderators and things like that.